the last 12, 13 years of the of the transition experiment has been uh, has been really swimming against the tide. <coughs> you know, we've we've built a network and a movement in 50 countries, thousands of places, of people experimenting with this model and trying out the tools and exercises that we've been <coughs> developing. And but that has always been in the context of um, no government support, no local government support, uh, the context of a government whose policies are all going in the opposite direction, a media whose messaging is all going in the opposite direction, <coughs> an education system that is going in the opposite direction. And in that context, I think what the transition movement has achieved is extraordinary, actually. You know, and exploring those edges where municipalities and communities meet and the resources and the tools needed for that and so on. The sense that I get at the moment because of the work the transition groups have already done and because of the rapid and powerful and beautiful emergence of the climate strikes and uh, Extinction Rebellion is that we, it feels to me like we are, we are on a tipping, a tipping place now. And I think that our experience for the last 13 years has been like walking up a, a hill. And when you're going up a hill, it's really hard work. And, you, you, and you, your muscles get very tired. And you, uh, you feel like you are always having to explain why we're going up the hill and um, there's not very many people there to help you and it can be quite a lonely place going up that side of the hill. I think those of us who have spent so long going up the hill that way find it very hard to imagine what it would be like to be going down the other side of the hill. And I think, I think and I, I was in Westminster on Friday where the youth climate strike, there were 100,000 young people in Westminster on the streets. I, was, I found it so emotional, it was just amazing. And um, there was a, a, and so, and I got the feeling when I was there of, of thinking, what if this day is the day historically we look back to as the day that, it, that we tipped across? And then we have Extinction Rebellion in October, which is going to have an enormous, enormous impact. And what if that's where it starts to really gain momentum? And when you go down a hill, you use very different muscles than when you go up the hill, you know. And uh, Josue and I once climbed, when we went to Sant'Orso for the Italian thing, we climbed up this really big hill. And then when we came back down a hill, the hill, different muscles, very, very different muscles hurt than when you climbed up the hill. And, uh, and so I think that experience of starting to go down the hill, when we see this cascade of positive uh, things rippling and knocking each other and building in that way, at the moment, that's, that's really, really hard for us to imagine. And I think it's so important now that we have the tools and the practices that allow us and allow Extinction Rebellion and allow the school strikes to really feel into that question of what if, what if we do this? What if actually we succeed? What if we are able to harness the schools and the tourist promotion organizations and the uh, music industry and the municipalities all really come, behind, come together around this vision of actually what we could create. And we actually manage to do that and it builds and it builds and it builds and those young people who are the school strikers become the politicians that actually we see that the, the, the stuff that we've been practicing for 13 years in transition all of a sudden, when the governments and local governments declare a climate emergency and then say, but well, we don't know what to do, the transition movement has spent 13 years developing the practices and the tools uh, and, the, and the ways of working that will be utterly essential to that being successful. It has so many stories that it can share about what that would be like. Um, that I, I find that a really exhilarating and energizing thought that actually this is this is that moment when when when, when we tip across uh, and in terms of the school strikes I think it's 
I think I think it's very tough being a school striker because you are also trying to be at school and you're organizing strikes to kind of to try and resolve a problem that you didn't really create very much and uh, a lot of the narrative in the school strikes is about we need you to do this we need you to do that it kind of gives and which is brilliant because it's important that that happens but at the same time the risk is that it gives a lot of its power away to other people who may or may not make those decisions my sense is that there's a beautiful potential for a really beautiful sort of symbiosis between the transition movement and the youth strikes which is developing a program where rather than I know I meet young people who are school strikers who are emotionally exhausted and who have had this kind of a you know I find it heartbreaking when I see a 10 year old child walking down the street with a placard that says you know the earth's on fire and you know that, 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 that they get that bit of it which is we have an enormous problem and it's probably too late and this is my future that is just being destroyed that's a that's a huge you know I remember when I was 12 13 and I was convinced that the world was going to end in a nuclear holocaust quite possibly that night that I would go to bed at night thinking I might not be here in the morning and that was a huge kind of emotional strain on me at the time you know and I think actually and so, so there's something about designing projects and programs that could go into schools that could give those young people the tools and the expertise and the activities that we do in transition that are in the context not just of talking but they're in the context of doing practical changes so that maybe some 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 of the dates that we're going to have a school strike but actually what we're going to do is we're going to go there and we're going to plant an orchard we're going to plant a thousand trees we're going to go and work in this community garden with refugees we're going to go and create a vertical garden all up the front of this particular building or we're going to do stuff in our school so there is a people can they can see that there is change happening which they've which they've made happen <clears throat> and they're learning the school the tips for how to function as groups how to manage burnout you know in, in the transition movement we have a fundamental belief that actually when you're working in this you need strategies to avoid burnout because burnout is horrible but we're expecting 12, 13, 15 year old kids to be absorbing all this information and they have no training or tools within for, for, for managing burnout at all. You know, it's really, we have a duty of care to those young people. You know, and the worst thing that the school strike we, we can do is to go along and say, now, what you need to do is, because they are amazing at how they are holding that movement and doing it without adults and creating something amazing, but I think for the transition movement to go and say, how can we help? And could we work with you to design a program that would really help? And something that could run in schools, something that would also help those kids. Because often those kids are there in that community, in that school. They might be the majority, the, the minority of students in that school who really care and are really passionate about climate change. And they have other people going, oh, it's not even real and you're wasting your time and you're completely mad. To have a program that comes into the school that works with all the kids says no 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 this is very very real this is an emergency this is why it's an emergency because one of the demands of the school strikes is tell us about climate change teach us about climate change but if that's all that happens they're going to be even more depressed and exhausted than they were before so they need that but then to have a to have a program that says but this is this is what we could do about it and i and i mentioned before about when i was in mons and there was an open space for young people and one of the questions was what should you be taught in schools and one of the kids wrote disobedience you know and that should be part of it and there should be disobedience class and there should be classes on how to work together and kids should learn all that stuff it would be amazing it would be a if, if it was a a curriculum that was te tried and tested out in belgium it would go all over the world people would be people would love that and it and it fits with that demand of the school strikes but it would be a, such an essential part of kids' imagination, education as well, I think. So I think that's a really, I think that could be an amazing space to meet as well. Because, well, like we were saying as well, you know, there is always a challenge in the transition movement that there are very few people who feel really confident to go out and be the kind of inspiring ambassadors of the transition movement. 
But those young people are really inspiring ambassadors of the school strikes movement and they could be the, the kind of next generation of people doing this stuff.